Phantom Lancer is huge. He was very powerful in 6.83, but because of the kind of overshadowing aspects of heroes like Troll, Warlord, and Sniper, you really didn't get to see it. But PL, he didn't really get changed at all. Maybe Power Treads got a plus one stat, and that's about it. This hero is still exactly the same as he was, essentially, and he was pretty imba in 6.83. It's just people didn't realize it, and now he's really uh, given his time to shine. Uh, he's just extremely strong now in the mid game, and I mean, he can even scale pretty well into late game. It's just a much different play style than what people were used to doing uh, or used to ex used to playing with with Phantom Lancer. You know, it's not as much about the split pushing. Uh, in my experience, at least, it's much more about mid game fights and just putting a lot of damage out extremely quickly. I mean, he can also tank up fairly easily. Doppelganger is actually pretty useful for dodging abilities. So yeah, I like the new. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'd like it, but it's you know it's it's tolerable tolerable nice tolerable, well yeah. i mean obviously there's some pros and cons to everything but in this case i think that the combat Prepare aspect of it is much better than the cancerous one of oh prior, yeah 100 pre prior to the rework so yeah. we're gonna see involvement we're gonna see you know that probably like a treads aqua build up and then maybe into something like the drums or the diffuser blade just a, a hero that can be very involved very active and reactive and uh, it's actually pretty good against Storm Spirit ganks because generally speaking you see the storm go for a pretty early orchid and with items like Manta Diffusal you're going to be able to purge that off and then go ahead and doppel dodge away anyways but we're looking at a safe lane storm in Van's hands this time around so probably going to be the soul ring early and that generally implies a bloodstone yeah a hundred pretty much uh, not all the time but very 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 often especially in the safe lane so apologies for any stream dropping on and off during the draft uh had to restart the stream but then the twitch server didn't really pick it up for some reason but we're all good now everyone welcome to the broadcast this is boreal versus not today and uh, apologies again for any disruptions in your viewing experience but some quick introductions for boreal it's going to be Jeppins on the clockwork angry testy on the phantom lancer pizza tad 37 the best name in dota KVH on the Zeus and PQ is going to be on the Earthshaker. And a little bit of action over this top rune here. It looks like Misko going to catch the but now Snare is the one who's actually taking a lot of damage. Storm's Shadow Fiend is able to actually pick up that bounty rune, which is going to be a pretty hefty advantage for him heading into this lane. Storm Spirit gets the one in the bottom lane and a lot of damage onto a couple of heroes here, but everyone living through it. Stinger manages to just barely make it out of there. Level I man seven wand charges on this SF who went wand first interesting mm -hmm. I guess with the new the new plus one attributes it's maybe a little it's a little more viable but he has H way wand charges already Jesus mm -hmm. yeah essentially he knows that he's gonna be topping out his charges at ten really early on against the Zeus in the mid lane the arc lightning spam he's using a lot more than just ten spells there and he wants to make sure that he uses it efficiently for both the HP and the mana so. By getting up to 17 charges instead of just 10, he's able to get a lot more value out of this item and use it at the more appropriate time. Uh, and in general, this has allowed him to control the lane pretty well. Already four Necromastery stacks. KVH is pretty much out of mana, but the bottle is on its way. And it goes for that very, very elite bottle and play standard with the Zeus. Just to allow him to control that lane a little bit better. Continue using the Arc Lightning and the Lightning Bolt when that comes online to maybe zone out Shadow Fiend. It does not have a ton of HP, but... As a result of that wand, I think it should be pretty hard for him to actually kill the Shadow Fiend just because he has so much health stored up already in that wand. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see the support Nyx Assassin and what he can accomplish. I saw Ice 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 play him in the offlane earlier today, but support is a whole different ballpark as far as what items you can actually expect from him. Probably just looking for kind of simple Arcanes, Blink Dagger type combo. I don't think they're looking for anything too fancy from him. Uh, too early on. We're gonna see up top some pressure coming out, but without glimpse. Oh, they do have the glimpse. They connect with it. Icarus dive canceled, and this should be our first blood. Ifrit pulled back a very well-timed glimpse from Pizza Dad 37. That's the power of the level two disruptor against the offlane Phoenix. Oh, that was a very well-timed glimpse. Pulls him back right at the end of that dive. I think it might it might have pulled him out a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. As long as you get it off right when the dive begins, you guarantee you are gonna yank him out of it, and that is uh. Really unfortunate for him. There is going to be... Oh my god. Dude, I, I can't catch a break today. Mid lane, KVH. Might be in some trouble here. I will unmute that Dota TV in a second. I don't want to miss this kill in the mid lane. Hey, if KVH is full HP, I, I think this is going to be some harassment. I don't, I don't think they're going to be right, able all right, to kill. Alright, I'm taking your word for it. See, it's fuck. It's checked. Ice fraud. 
Ice Frog, please. probably is picking up the wrong microphone, and you're going to have to restart Dota 2. All right, I'm just going to put down the other microphone, and we're going to hope for the best here. <laughs> oh, my God. This is what happens, man. This is this is what happens when I try to play Counter-Strike. You feel me? Good stuff. So KVH is actually going to be getting pretty hard here. Now they've got extra right-click potential. Coming in, he's in the river, going to get hit by the Mana Burn Impale, and now he's going to be eating multiple raises, multiple right-clicks, but it's still not going to be enough to bring him down because he was lacking mana. Generally speaking, that's a bad thing, but up against the Nyx here, it is what saves his life. So he's going to go for a Bottle Crow, and that'll put him right back where he started. Yeah, that's pretty fortunate for him, honestly. Otherwise, he almost definitely would have gone down here. And, uh, you know, I'm even more mystified as to what microphone this is picking up because, you know, there's only so many around my desk right now. and I Just <laughs> just uh, act like an election. Just put, crowd them all around there. Yeah, all, all I don't know what's teams. happening. I, I, I thought it was maybe the headset one, so I put that one down, but that's not working. And I just, you know, this is just this is Dota 2. Indeed, indeed. Man, it would be nice to have some, you know, diagnostics <coughs> for audio. In if Dota only TV. there was literally anything that was useful on the Dota TV settings. Nope. There, there's a green bar, man. Green bar. <laughs> that, that's supposed to be enough. He disrupted. Glimpse pulled him back. He does stole the Icarus dive. Gonna oh, use it. Gets stunned nice up by the Fisher. Ifrit, very low HP now. And KVH are running away as well. Is he going to make it out of here? It does look like he is. Mm -hmm. It's the Phoenix, yeah. on the other hand. We make little no, nope, almost not so much. So good snag of the bounty rune there by KVH, able to get the bottle restoration based on that. If the SF had claimed it for himself, there's no way KVH gets out alive. Instead, they kill the Phoenix again and make it two for nil. And this is kind of frustrating for Ifrit because he still has to go back to that off lane. He doesn't really have the option of jungling as a level two Phoenix. He doesn't have his tranquil boots yet. It's just in general he keeps on putting himself in harm's way. And if they keep the creep equilibrium pulled back, then he gets nothing from the lane. Fortunately for him, it is a double range creep wave, so it is going to be giving him some levels to the tower, but whether or not he gets last hits and gets those tranquils is a different story. In the meantime, just looking across the board, we've already got a decent net worth pool up on the Storm Spirit. Van able to pick up 30 last hits here and bring himself to the top of the net worth, but right behind him is going to be Angry Testy on that PL, who is going for a 3-1-1 build. So sometimes you see stats, in this case, Max Spirit Lance and uh, otherwise... Just kind of going for the one point wonders. So I've got a question for you. Where do you land on the mango? Uh, some heroes it's amazing on. Some heroes it's kind of meh. But I actually like. I I think there's a, a few heroes that could do a lot of work with it. Obviously, uh, the stand, the ones that you look at is like the Bristleback because he runs out of mana so quickly with his early levels of quill spray, and he wants to kind of refresh that and keep the quill spray Radiant stacks rolling. Really good for attack. him. Um. Could see it on here, like Undying, the Spamming Decay. Uh, I've seen that actually go to great effect. I saw a really cool usage from Ice 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 on that Nyx Assassin I was talking about. He actually went two uh, mangoes at level one. And because the base HP regen he of Nyx Assassin like is already permatango. 2.5, he had like constant full HP. It was like half Tranquil Boots constantly, just out, out the gate. It's insane on Nyx, just because of how much regen yeah. he naturally has. That's what, that's what made me uh, prompt the question. I noticed that he was just having a ton of regen. I mean, he has half a tango all the time, so that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Not bad at all. It makes it very difficult for the Clockwork to get aggressive here, and you actually see Jepins, he's just going for a Rocket Flare build. He doesn't Dying want to do much more than just pull the creep way back. Storm, though, has the ball lightning, so he has to play it very carefully. Here's the Earth Shaker coming in. Nice cog back, and it's going to be the Fisher onto Van. The creep is dying, so that means they're going to take some tower shots here, but Van should still be fine with the tango and the bottle. And the Witch Doctor is rotating in there at the end, but not able to really assist. Yeah, yeah, it's still muted. I have actually no idea what microphone Dota TV is looking for. I've I've gathered every single one and plugged it into my computer and put it in front of my my face, and uh, I look ridiculous, and it's still not working. So I just uh, I don't know what to tell you. We're gonna have to restart Dota 2 at some point. Yep. If there's a pause, yeah, I will happily restart it. But uh, until then, I am so sorry to those watching on Dota TV. That's that's my heartfelt apology. That's the best you're ever gonna get out of me, really. That's like the most sincere apology in a year for me. No, oh, it's it's all already serious nice, business. So. Yeah. So the new mud golems. Have you seen anyone successfully gank with them, like with the triple stun or whatever? 
No, not not oh, like God. that. I mean, they're I only, it's it only like a 0. 0.6 stun duration. I, I've seen them used, but I haven't seen them successfully gank with. And actually, I've noticed one weird thing. Uh, we're going to see Van. Oh, yeah, no, man. Hook shot, oh, putting little man doesn't ball any, but no man. Oh, he didn't soul ring it, so he's going to go down to the rocket flare. Then the Sunder God grabs the secure too. They see Mystic Cow. He's got Carapace, but that's not going to do much here at level one. And he's still going to have to get a really good stun combo out. Jepin's under fire, but the Fisher, no. Dropping him down low, he'll still survive with the magic. Stick. It's the clockwork to fall, and Mr. Cow can just walk away. Oh man, that's that's actually quite unfortunate. They didn't block it out the way they wanted Whoa. to. And PQ actually gets stuck here, but there is a disruptor coming in now. Stinger, paralyzing cast might save him for a little bit. Voodoo restoration, healing up two levels in that, so he's actually healing quite a bit. Mist Cow running up as well. There is a glimpse back. That's gonna shove the SF back into the river, and looks like they are gonna make it out of here in the end. Yeah, so Hand of Midas coming out on Smash here. Already starting off, obviously, you mentioned with the magic wand, but Mid -lane. up with a hand of Midas here. Zeus, is, well, Zeus actually might bring down Van. Van, so low on HP, disjoints. The Clockwork Flare gets him all in ball lightning, but the Phoenix goes down. That was a costly gank for them. They try to gank the Zeus, and they do kill him, but he put out so much damage before going down. Yep, really can't underrate his potential, and we'll see how, if he can get a little bit tankier to make sure that he can get those spells off a little bit more actively and maybe even avoid death in the process. But Radiant's up top, top in the meantime, Phantom Lancer doing Phantom Lancer things. Just uh, goes ahead, turns the Ring of Aquila on, and goes to town on the tower. So he's going to be able to control his jungle, control the lane really well, and it's just going to be continuous pressure for not today on that top lane. And I got to say that... They don't have the best heroes to deal with the PL. Like, it's not bad to have the attack. Shadow Fiend with the Requiem, and obviously the Storm Spirit has some decent AoE as well. But generally speaking, these uh, these illusions are still going to be very well in play. And it's going to be like on the kind of like on the Ifrit, the Phoenix, to actually negate most of them. Otherwise, they're still going to be burning a lot of mana, causing a lot of grief, and it's just going to be a point of frustration for not today, mid to late game. Yeah, and the, in comes the ball lightning. He's going to catch PQ, but not able to get up the vortex. Oh, now Jeppins wow. goes in. Zeus ulti coming down. Misko going down as well as the Storm Spirit. Two dead for not today. They try to gank Boreal, and there's the egg from the Phoenix, but that is not going to do anything. He goes down as well. Double kill for the Zeus, and that's a complete disaster for not today. Yeah. You can see why they're like picking attack. clockwork for Boreal Esports, especially in the hands of Japanese here. He's doing some amazing work fortified. these fights, real big contributions, Radiant's setting up the Zeus damage so well, attack. and now they're 7 to Dyer's 2 in this early game. I would attack. say they have actually superior late game for the most part. So the fact that uh -oh, they're winning Smash. out the game helps Smash a lot. is maybe dead. He's so close to going down. Angry Testy not going to go down to the second Requiem. And the Angry Testy just going to work. Yeah. Just a really good movement from him. I mean, he's able to take the tower. He's able to gank mid. Just very active, very involved. We might get Hellbear clapped. He has to watch his illusion spots. Oh, but still, it does. It shouldn't matter too much. He'll just go for more lances and be able to at least finish up this camp before going back. Yeah. Um, angry Testy. He's going to be very happy getting that kill. On Smash. Knocks back his souls. Slows him down a little bit. He does have that Midas. It is off cooldown. How do you feel about the Hannah Midas, honestly? I'm uh, like, not a it was huge fast. fan of... It was fast, sure, but... I don't know. I mean, I guess... I, I think I could get behind it if you had, like, a big stack. So you, you wouldn't lose that much time towards, like, whatever your next item is. Because uh -huh. I feel like... I don't know. I'm a personally a big fan of the Mech Shadow Fiend. Yeah. And Midas obviously makes that much less effective. Oh, my God. Ifrit might actually die here. I was watching him take some damage, but... Not going to go down in the end. But I th I th when you get that, that you know, when you get the Midas, obviously, if you go for mech next, it's going to be so much later and a lot less effective, in my opinion. Dyer's but mm -hmm. I don't know. I I could be convinced. Maybe Smash will convince me. We'll see how it pans out right now, though. They smoked under an Observer Ward, but no pinks came out. So maybe they didn't see it. They're baiting in with Jeffins here. And they've got three up. Beautiful oh, static storm. Oh, God. From Pizza Dead. They will lose the Clockwork, but they get two in exchange. One being the Core Storm Spirit. And look at Stinger going down quick. The buyback on the Storm. He's got to get something from this. Can he get Pink Win? Is the ultimate going to land? No, he can't go far enough. They go right past him. They will kill him off. But now, under the tower, they're getting right click down. The Supernova will pop. And it looks like... Like Van's actually going to be committing. Oh, he has no mana. mana left. He has no mana left. He has two bottle charges, but no soul ring for 16 seconds. This was from a buyback, and he's going to go down. Oh. The buyback becomes dieback for the storm spirit. Oh, Requiem. 
That's KB not enough to get out in KB, but it is going to be with a couple right clicks. Oh, Ifrit going to live too. Pops the stick, trying to make it out of here. Now stuck in the static field, I do believe. Angry Testy Illusions are going to bring him down with Pizza Dad. 37 as well. Now Smash coming in. And this fight quickly turning into a complete disaster once again for Not Today. Are they going to lose Smash too? Yes, can't even bring oh someone down gosh. with him. Not Today are just crumbling, just throwing bodies at a wall, it seems like. They just can't get anything done in these fights. Yeah, I mean, they're getting a couple of kills here and there, but none of them are even remotely worth it. We're just seeing massive net worth advantages swing forward for Boreal, and especially that dieback on the Storm Spirit. That's the hero that you put in your safe lane to get items. Expending your gold for the buyback, which in of itself costs 445, and dying twice in a row, it negates the entire early game plan from not today. Suddenly, we're looking at over 3,000 in favor of Boreal uh, in gold and experience. And the Storm Spirit is going to have absolutely no items anytime soon. Radiance yeah, he, he is so into poor now. Oblivion Staff, and he doesn't even have the first one. Yeah, he is so poor. So, Van, like you mentioned, pretty much just negating the entire laning phase. Any advantage he got there is now gone. Net worth is topped mm. by Smash, but he hasn't had a big impact on this fight anyway. KBH in the top lane is going to go down. He is just... Caught a little bit out of place with now. Oh, Van, they're going to go in on Van. Glimpse back into the static storm. Whoa. Okay. He sometimes just walks through that, I guess, but he's still going to go down. Yeah. The connect was a little, little slow. It, it didn't form yeah, right. It didn't quite, enough. didn't quite get all the way up. Misko now, the one behind enemy lines. There's the carapace trying to get an extra stun off, but he's going to actually go for the kill here on PQ. There's the soul burn. Not going to be enough. Now he's stuck going down as well. And Misko. Yeah, the shaker. Going to fall. Phoenix takes oh, down the shaker. Glimpse, Pulls back. Dies. Very short because the battery assault knocks it off. The stun from the battery assault stops the Icarus dive. And with one more hit, oh, they'll just right click it down. Or maybe not. Oh, the cast. good cast. Bouncing between the two. Jeff is down a really bad spot. He'll get stunned, and I think Ifrit will go for him. But with four versus two, oh, he just still melts. Be a pretty easy fight. Yeah, he has just no HP when he gets hit by those lightning bolts. Jeppin's going to run on forward. No fear with 10 HP. Takes down the Witch Doctor. Not today again. It's just, they feel like they just keep like throwing things at them. And it's just like a couple at a time, just kind of filtering in slowly. Single file, please. <laughs> and they're just getting slaughtered. Yeah. It is just them trying and trying to really recoup for their losses, trying to find kills, and they're in chaos. They are in disarray, and they aren't able to find anything. I mean, individually, a couple of these plays are really good. Like, I, I like the ultimate and even the Malediction play, but at only level 2 Maledict, Stinger just couldn't get anything out of that. And really, the only, I mean, they're killing one person every fight. One fight they kill a Clockwork, one fight they kill a Zeus, one fight they kill an Earthshaker. But in the end, now they've got 7 kills versus 18. And we're seeing a smoke play to get even more aggressive into the Radiant Jungle. If they yeah. find Smash, like, this game's freaking done, man. Yeah, and Smash is really all that Not Today do have going for them. And, well, what does he have? He's going to be going for a BKB now. So, sort of skipping a lot of the items we're used to seeing in the beginning. You know, whether that's the mech or sometimes it's a Blink Dagger. You know, there's a lot of options, but... Since he went for that Midas, now he's just going for the bigger items quicker. Yeah, I feel like Yules would actually be pretty good this game. I mean, I know the mana cost is pretty insane, but it is still is a very attack. valuable item for Shadow Fiend in finding combos. And, of course, trying to deal with the damage coming in from Boreal. Uh oh, Stinger. Like, Maybe oh, in trouble. Man. Definitely in trouble. Now that he gets hookshotted. Lightning bolted down by KVH. Middle tower yeah. is under attack. But I think like the Yules, you could wait out the power cogs that c catch you. You could wait out the kinetic static. Like there are a lot of things Dyer's that you just want to buy yourself two and a half seconds for. But we are going to see Angry Testy go toe to toe, not be able to do anything about the Nyx assassin though. Um, one thing that's really important about Boreal's lineup is their ability to chase. Once they start winning a fight, they're going to finish winning a fight because they have a hook shot, they have the glimpse, they're going to run you down, and we're going to see that maybe against Smash. He'll try to TP away, and there will be no hook shot to stop it. So. It is going to be everybody disengaging, teeping away, and taking the tier one top. But that's really the first really good thing that's happened for not today. Other than that, they've got some good offensive offensive wards down. But I'm not sure about the chances of a jungle engagement. Right now. Yeah, I, you know, I have to say, you alluded to this earlier, but the thing that worries me the most about the lack of farm on the storm, I think, is that really only leaves them like one real ability to try to bring down the Phantom Lancer. You know, if he gets going at all with the illusions, and that's Requiem. Without, like, a bunch of mana spam, 
Oh, I missed a kill. Smash nah, dies. Just, it was just literally smash, continues to right click a tower, gets the tower, and Jeffins walks up to him and hits him with everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, when you only have that Requiem to deal with the Phantom Lancer, I feel like the Phantom Lancer will easily be able to just kill Smash. Angry Testy has a very good amount of farm, not as much as Smash, but we'll see, I guess. Now that Smash is the BKB, he should be able to live a little bit better in these fights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to negate actually most of these heroes' abilities. Obviously, the Hookshot still connects, and the Don't Phantom Lancer is still going to be right-clicking decently, but... Generally speaking, this BKB, while it's at its uh, like eight plus second charges, is going to be allowing Smash to just man up in all situations. But he's died so much, his soul count is actually pretty low. Where it's okay to build defensively on an SF because he naturally gets uh, offensive potential from his spells and from his necromastery. Here he's kind of feeling a little lackluster with only 18. Yeah, he needs to spend a little bit of time, maybe in the jungle, take up some some quick souls, can gather those pretty quickly. It looks like that is what he's going to do here. This Observer Ward, unfortunately, going to be going down here, and that's a pretty recent one. Uh -huh. KVH grabbing that one. Thinking about ulting. Now Stinger going to get ulted by the Clockwork. The hook shot coming in. Stinger trying to make something happen here with the Maledic, not able to do so. The Clockwork easily able to take him down. Going for Mechanism. Interesting. Uh, I guess he could be going for Guardian Greaves, but that item yeah. does not seem worth it this early in the game, in my opinion, at least. I don't know. Hmm. It's, I don't. I think that item is pretty insane. I mean, the first of all, the mechanism it doesn't cost any mana. It actually gives you mana instead. True, of true. Game boots. It so costs so much. My, I guess my biggest problem is it costs so much money. The recipe the is recipe like fourteen hundred or something. But you're not only trading off for that free mana boost, but if you look at the passive, the fact that it applies in an AOE to everyone and not just yourself makes it like so valuable. It's actually insane. But we'll see. At least has the combo, the arcane's mech, and he can. Play around with his mana pool decently here. The Rocket Flare actually scouts things out, and they're going to cut off any path of retreat here. They've got Glimpse, the Smash. Oh, Requiem! Requiem going down, damage, and they're all stuck enough. inside the Static Storm. That could be very, very, very good. But we'll see. Boreal, Jeppins, nope, not going to make it out. Smash just going to work, right clicking, but maybe going to be brought down by the Lightning Bolts. Angry Testy going to work. Double kill. And brings down that SF right after the BKB is done. You see how fast he just gets Dyer's melts. And my worry is he might have bought this so early that it's just going to run out. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. He's going to be in trouble. And now KBH, the one who might be in trouble, gets pulled back by Van. Ooh, I think that's nice going to be it. That's enough to bring down the Zeus. That is a nice kill. Very important one now. They have a couple of heroes rolling in. He does not have a ton of mana at the moment. Gets brought back, stunned up. Maybe yeah. he's going to be brought down. Excellent execution. These supports are destroying the cores. Honestly, definitely. like the execution has been so good on these little engagements. Oh, most definitely. But still, I would have to say that that's absolutely worth it for the Stormstroke to get the kill on the Zeus there. He buys his Orchid off of the gold he gets off of Zeus, and uh, Zeus loses 329 towards a whatever big item he's looking for, maybe a Bloodstone of his own. So I think it's a really important kill that the Storm gets there, and sacrificing his life for that is actually perfectly fine right now. So good that Boreal supports are able to pull it back and make it an exchange, but still a trade that not today are okay with. The, the trade that kind of sucked was the Shadow Fiend unveiling that BKB and only able to get the clockwork out of it. That could have gone a lot better, but just his damage is kind of lacking right now. He just like, he pops the BKB, he does one cool thing, and then... Uh, Hook shot in on Smash, he's caught in. BKB again. He has to use the BKB, but that's not really going to help while he's stuck in the cogs. Jeppins just not taking that much damage. Ifrit coming in as well. He gets Glimpse back. Now Jeppins maybe going to be in some trouble, but now the BKB is gone for Smash. In goes Angry Testy, not able to finish him off. That's pretty important. Van, he darts through to the back of the fight. Now trying to find the Earthshaker. Does Orchid him up, pulls him back, brings him down, and Smash is still alive with just a sliver of HP. He's back. Walking to the base, down goes Stinger. Ifrit has the urn on him, but looks like he is going to probably make it out of the fight. Drops down the egg, and he should be just fine healing back up. But are they going to be able to re-engage on this? They're going to get the stun off on the Zeus. Angry Testy taking damage, orchid it up. This orchid paying dividends for Van. Gotten two kills off of it in this fight. Oh, now KVH in some trouble as well. Not today. Are bringing this one to the edge here. There's the glimpse back. Pizza Dad 37, the only one left. Getting darted forward by Van. Now, oh, one last click, and all five are dead for Boreal. This game is a topsy turvy roller coaster. And Pizza Dad 37 goes down to Van. Not, I mean, at the end of this, five for two. Oh, 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 oh what? 
<laughs> BQ! What a player! He's like, yeah, I got you. Hank Quinn Dota, but... Yeah, honestly, the only hero that didn't die there was the Shadow Fiend. Like, he got out with one HP. Everybody else dies. And let the bodies hit the floor, man. This is just a lot of fun to watch. But at the same time, I think a big aspect of Not Today's fight there was the fact that the Phoenix got two mechs off instead of one. He was able to live for 45 full seconds, get back into the fight, and use the second mech. So that's really big, because that's just a huge burst of health that allows them to keep fighting. and allows Ivan to go as deep as he did. The kill on Disruptor, where at a normal game against a support Disruptor, oh, nice kill. With Top Dr. lane Stinger is yeah, totally easy, dead. Easy but um, the, the 23 minute kill on dis support disruptor, generally speaking, means nothing. But in this case, Pizza Dead 37 is so close to an Ag Scepter that that's actually delaying a critical item. So I gotta say that uh, anytime you can kill the disruptor right now is probably a good time because soon enough you're gonna be facing uh, something that just mutes you all over. You're not able to use your items, not able to use your spells, and we're gonna see a glimpse back on the Mystic out here. The Kinetic again failing to connect, but they still might get him. Yeah, the urn. Oh, it in comes Van, though. He's looking for a revenge kill with the Orchid onto KVH, who does not have a Yule to protect himself. Has to suicide with the Bloodstone. That is definitely not ideal. You want to get those charges up, get the mana regen rolling. Ifrit. Just going to fly on down, but now has to turn oh, on the they egg. Could break I, this. I, they could break this. Yeah, I think they're going to try. Testy's here as well, and they do get him. So if we're falling down in the end, this game is all over the place. Yeah, one inter one little interaction a lot of people don't realize, but uh, I think it's very relevant in how quickly this Nyx is dying in all these fights. Uh, first of all, he went for Midas, so of course he doesn't have any HP to work with, really. But um, they picked the the Nyx right into the Zeus, as if they were kind of countering him with the, you know the Spike Carapace and the Mana Burn. But the Spike Carapace is was for a while only level one, and the stun really what well, just is kind of insignificant at that point, other than maybe canceling TPs. But the way that Zeus's spells work, actually, it applies Static Field first. So the little bit of damage based on a percentage of Nyx's health is the damage that's reflected on KBH. The Lightning Bolt of Thunder God's Wrath still goes right to his health pool. And that allows him to be just fried very early on in these engagements with a lot of critical nukes. The more you know. I did not know that, Blaze. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's good stuff. Blaze, you're like a mechanics just dictionary. Oh, God, that just splits the wickets. With that hook shot, you're just a you're you're like an encyclopedia. Yeah, well I was. I don't know. Six point eight four is messed That's up. That's true. Yeah, it has, to, just, it has changed a lot. Now there's the Fisher going so. for in Misco. He gets Echo slammed as well. Brought down by the aftershock damage. PQ man, what <laughs> this guy's going ham. Yeah, really, just very aggressive for an Earthshaker at this stage, but. I mean, he's got the farm to do it, so he's, he's just kind of showing what he can do. Dyer's but yeah, I'm going to need a new edition attack. of uh, that encyclopedia yeah, pretty soon. Yeah, the encyclopedia so volume two. Yeah, there's... Um, I, I was going to mention earlier, I saw the casual cloak. I was pretty sure Stinger was going for the Glimmer Cape, and we do see it here. So pretty good response to a lot of this. He'll be maybe able to channel his Death Ward in Invis. He could help out an ally that's caught inside all those uh, painful spells, magical damage in particular, gonna be weakened against this item. Yeah, could could do a lot of work against the Zeus. That's an obvious one to look out for here, and some of the Earthshaker damage as well. So, Radiance that could actually be very, very good this game. I'm interested to see the development of Glimmer Cape, but oh god, Stinger! Jeez. Not gonna help you here, Who goes down. Wow. Now Smash, the one who might be in some trouble. He gets brought back, but pops the BKB to turn off that glimpse. Yeah. Wandering on good through for here. I mean, yeah. it's not a kill, but it's it's just shy of it. It's yeah, I mean, getting the BKB, BKB yeah, getting the BKB charge off is very, very huge. And he's down to seven seconds now already. He has used a ton of these charges extremely aggressively, but now has the Scotty to show for his efforts. So Smash, now with a lot more HP, may be able to live through these fights a little bit oh, longer. I think they can get this hook. They have a ward in a perfect position. Jeppins will just track him down, wait for the cooldown, and hook shot right there on the There it is. Money. They get him in. He gets glimpsed back outside of the static field, but he does not have the BKB, so he should be going down here. There's a mechanism from Ifrit. Is that enough to keep Smash alive? They're going to town on him. Jeppins trying to make this happen. Smash so close to dying. Oh He's going to go down at the very end only after killing. He dies to neutral, so no gold there. Death Ward going to go down. Glimpses well this is a weird fight pizza dad now drops down the static field in comes van he's gonna go crazy with the orchid drops it down on the earth shaker who has all the spells off cd gets killed by the storm spirit so that's an effective initiation by van in the middle of the fight there and phantom lancer able to bring down the next on the backside. Mm -hmm. 
They're gonna Glimmer Van back. He's gonna try to build up a little bit of mana here. Maybe go for a reinitiation right now. Angry Testy though, he's going forward deep. Doppel connects now for the Lance. He wants to bring down Stinger, but he's walking into three heroes and has to yeah. play it a little safer. <laughs> Glimmer, Glimmer capes away. Again. Yeah, that makes him invis and it's a very cool looking particle effect, I have to yeah. say. And the cool thing is it costs no mana. So even if the the diffusal burns every ounce of Stinger's mana, he's still able to maybe use an escape card if the Zeus ult is down. Yep. It does cost no mana to activate that item if you're not familiar with it, so. Pretty versatile, honestly. Mm -hmm. Bloodstone picked up now for the Storm Spirit. And the next couple of minutes here are going to be pretty crucial for him. KVH has not had much luck in getting those charges. For the Storm Spirit, I'd say it's probably even more important for him to get a couple of charges built up. I mean, if you can get up to 15, 16 charges, you've really become a huge problem in team fights. So what happened to KVH, man? I mean, he was able to avoid a lot of near-death experiences. He was able to maneuver well in the earlier stage. He's able to get a Bloodstone out quick. Van, he's die-backing. He's charging too deep. Yeah, there's oh, going to be that Jepins. kill on to Jepins. Nice pick there. But yeah, I mean, he was diving. He was he was able to do some good damage in the fights. He's been contributing a lot. And now we look at his net worth, and he is actually all, like, fifth, what is that, 3,500 behind the Storm Spirit right now? The Storm Spirit who died back early in the game? Yeah, just, it seems really to me like he just got absolutely destroyed in almost every single you know fight since the very beginning. He's gone down. Misko going to die here. But... I think, you know, a lot of it, you have to point to the fact that he has no Yules and no Force Staff. So he's just mm -hmm. at the will of the Storm Spirit who went Orchid first. So the Orchid, I mean, it's really easy for the Storm to just jump on him and kill him. And I think it has been the Storm that's killed him many times. Sure. Yeah, that would definitely help that Nemesis advantage. Oh. I mean, I kind of feel like the game plan is a little bit to have this, the Disruptor sitting behind KVH so that they can, you know, bait it in, get the Static Storm out and prevent that silence. But who knows? Is this the pause you were waiting for? Yeah. All right, you want me to keep talking. Then? Yeah, you, you just keep talking. I'm just going to restart Dota really quick, and we're going to hope to God this fixes this mic problem. Alrighty, boys. So we're going to be seeing the Aghanim Scepter come out for the Clockwork pretty soon, and uh, where they had Pursuit before, now they're going to be able to chase them pretty much to the end of the Earth, and uh, that's going to be obviously really effective for Boreal once they start winning fights, but it might be on a Blink Echo Slam that they have to actually take these engagements. So not today. They're feeling a little bit more confident. The network graph has shifted a lot, and they might look to start pushing, and that's where the possible opening lies, is if they Blink Echo comes through, they start winning a fight, they can wipe them out. Just wipe the entire floor <coughs> with them with maybe one death. I mean, they have some amazing high ground defense. With the Aghanim Static Storm Kinetic Field, the Echo Slam, uh, the Power Cogs way, uh, w is a great displacement tool as well for really breaking up the fight. It's just Boreal really are play are able to play better on the de defensive, but these past few fights have been putting them in the open battlefield where it can go kind of either way. So kind of waiting for not today to gain a little bit of confidence so that they can start clustering up, start fighting together, and that might be Boreal's opportunity to swing it back. But for those in Dota TV that have not been hearing Greg until this point in time, we if did you it, Reddit. do not hear him in just a second, then go ahead and retoggle the audio channel off and then on so you can fix any possible Dota TV bugs and you can hear his wonderful voice. Yeah, I think it sh everything should be fixed now after a quick restart. And it is worth noting here that Pizza Dad does have that Aghanim, so I think he's had it in the last fight as well. And you know, the question on everyone's mind, is Pizza Dad the best Dota 2 player of all time? I just love this guy's name. <laughs> I have to, you know, I just have to submit to the Pizza Dad memes. Uh-oh, Glimmer Cave forward. They're going to get the stun out of Invis here. They can just combo it up. <laughs> and he is going to go down in the end. Jepin's able to trade that one, but that's the aggressive use of the Glimmer Cave. And there's a lot of dimension to this item, honestly. Yeah, just kind of moving in. It is kind of like a mini Shadow Blade. Very short duration, but very cheap, as you mentioned. That is such a cheap item to do so many things with. I, I kind of feel like that's the item that's going to get nerfed, if anything. Like, you can maybe reduce the magic resistance to 50% or 40%. Getting that much magic resistance and all those cool invis combos, it, it just feels like people are going to be exploiting the crap out of that pretty soon. But really, there's a lot of imbalance in the new items. I mean, we like to talk about the luxury ones, but have you actually seen the Solar Crest? That yeah, item that item is seems really gold. good. And through BKB, <laughs> you can put it on an enemy carry to give them 30% mischance. Yeah, that like, item seems like, very, what? very good. Uh, but yeah. I agree. I agree with that, that statement for sure. I've seen some... I've been sitting in on some scrims and that item is very good. <laughs> 
So we'll All see. All right, Ags up for clockwork. We'll see if Jeff Lins can keep this roll, ball rolling for some of the best clockwork play. You'll see this side of 6.84. Clockwork hook onto Smash. They can't even worry about a BKB here. It wouldn't say Smash. He'll go down. And that is a, just an easy pick. He kind of handed it to him, but at the same time, it's great for Boreal to capitalize on it and even get the Courier. That was oh, nothing on it, actually, but still a nice pickup. For some reason, just sitting here. Now they're going to put some pressure with Smash down. He does have the buyback, but I don't think that's... I, I don't know if he's going to be willing to use that for the tier 2 tower. I would not imagine. Nah, I so. wouldn't say so. Cause then it just sets you for getting picked off once again by Hookshot or uh, Static Storm Genetic where you don't get your BKB off and as soon as that happens like the game is practically lost because you, you're just down for so long with your death timer. Oh, oh, oh Jeff is going in on Stinger. Goodbye. Stinger gets absolutely destroyed. He does not have the luxury of buyback if they do decide to continue this push and well, real need to be very careful. They're going to try to trade for the top lane tower. Misko is hiding in the wings here in case they rotate anyone back. But it looks like Boreal just want to commit here and force a buyback out of a smash. TP for Misko. He does have it. Van as well. So they do have some defense here. Vale is going to go down. Now Static Storm on to Phoenix. He's going to get brought down by the Zeus salty. And now they're going to lose the tower. Now we're going to see it's a good play from Van here, balling in and out as best he can. He's not worried about the Static Storm, so he gets to play a little bit more actively. Um, the Glyphs is off cooldown, though, so still have to watch that. But either way, the Rack's down. ton of gold going to Boreal. If they get the Range Racks, too, that would be huge. Uh, people are actually leaving the Range Racks. I feel like with the buff to gold, that Range Racks is still is actually important enough to kind of suicide for a little bit. But listen, Pizza Dad going down here. He will get that kinetic play against Van. And they're distracting from the Catapult. That nearly brings down the Racks in the end. But it is just going to be the melee racks and uh, the disruptor going down on the back end. So still a lot of gold going the way of Boreal there, getting kill after kill in the tier three at tier three. Uh, sorry, tier two, tier three, and the melee racks gives them just a ton of momentum in this game. Yeah, and Pizza Dad does manage to buy Blink Dagger before going down, so not much money lost for him. KVH has yeah. a Blink Dagger. I mean, look at the own. net worth graph right now. Like it's been back and forth. Kind yeah, of it's even. been on a roller coaster. And then suddenly they, they hit the drop. That's yeah. The, the, <laughs> that's the death defying roller coaster drop right there. That's yeah. definitely not what not today we're looking for. It's it's more horrifying for them than anyone. And down to 7,500. Uh, just about for Voreal. And one racks down. So this mid lane now going to push in pretty continually over the course of this game. Going to provide a little bit less gold for not today. So they're going to have to pay a little bit of special attention to that. And just the other day in Canada Cup, we did see one team lose because they forgot to push out a racks before or push out a lane before losing or before trying to throw. And, and that was one of the weirdest games I've seen ever. There was Wait, so they, they, they oh, 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 PQ. Maybe in some oh, trouble. Van. Trying to make something of it, but they're just going to get oh. double jailed and disengaged for everyone, it looks like. No glimpse, so. Oh, uh, they should be able to glimpse back Nyx at least. Yeah, he's he's within range for sure. So, gets caught in the cogs. Nice cogs. Four staff pulling him out, but he's slowed down, and that's the end of him. So, Roche is pretty much right there waiting for them. But what happened in that game you were saying? There was the, uh, one team had like had five Necro books or something. And they didn't push out and and the other team like was definitely winning like two two racks is down or something and they went to go take the last racks and they just snuck into the base and like killed the throne with their five necros they had like one racks down and they just went for tier fours and then thrown with the a million necro books it was hilarious i don't remember what game that was i think it was canada cup the other day nice. i have seen my fair share of five necro straps the lun the lone druid had two necros oh wow That's yeah awesome. it was it was all in it, it was all gotta, the necros. Got to go for some arc ward in play there. <laughs> it was himself up. pretty epic. So we're gonna see an invisor on the clockwork, looking for solo kills. Doesn't have the blade mail yet to really make the thunderdome happen. But if Zeus had an ulti, I would say he definitely gets a kill. Instead, he's probably looking for witch doctor and hoping for the best. Could be looking for smash, and I think that would be a pretty big mistake. But with the Earthshaker helping out, maybe not. Blink Echo. There's going to be some big damage. The Glimmer Cape not coming out from Stinger. That thing has a thousand range, but he's going to use the ultimate here onto Jeffins. Do some good damage, and Storm will be able to clean it up. The Guardian's Greaves helping out, and he lives. Oh, oh no, the Storm. Guardian's Greaves a model, and he walks away. Oh, my. <laughs> that is not good. That, that was just a free pickoff. And, yeah, it, and really it turns was. out to be a free pickoff, but it definitely was not one. Is under attack. 
Refresh and, orb. The choice for Zeus. Pizza Dad in enemy territory. Oh boy, Pizza Dad. Zeus gonna come. Zeus ulti's angry oh. testing coming in. Man, losing all of his mana. So much damage as well. Misko in trouble. Now the Phoenix. That egg, zero damage onto it. It's gonna blow up and that takes Earthshaker. But in the back line, you see the Nyx Assassin goes down. Van goes in. That's enough to help bring down the Earthshaker. Now Angry Testy looking to go to work here. That was a buyback from the Storm Spirit. Mm -hmm. And now Stinger, the one who might yeah. be in some trouble. They do have the Zeus here to drop down the Lightning Bolt. And he goes down. Yeah, so the Storm actually in uh, exchange lost 1170 gold. The reliable gold gains reduced by 60%. He gets almost nothing for buying back there other than guaranteeing the Earthshaker dies. And he has nothing left to his name. He can only buy a day on one, and that's all he's got left. Yeah, I mean, he knows there's a push coming in here, so he basically just has to buy something. They need to try to figure out a way to burst down here to push off this, and I don't even know if it's going to be enough. Like, they have so much HP. Angry Testy, with this Scotty of his own, is silenced up, does not have Manta style, so he might have made a fatal error. We'll find out. He's going to try to make it out. Double walk. No, looks like he's going to live. He does have an Aegis still in that inventory so he'll be respawning the next time he goes down but this game crazy all over the place smash now mm -hmm. with an eagle song yeah i actually was going to note that smash could have absolutely been saved in that engagement that happened on the mid lane there the witch doctor was up on the high ground with the glimmer cape ready and that thing has a thousand cast range he can pretty just throw it out anywhere the frick he wants could have given smash and biz and the zeus ulti was on cooldown so he could have at least gotten five seconds of invis out of that bad position and there's a good chance he would have survived but witch doctor looks at it go he goes for the offensive play and that that works out to a degree but overall long term boreal are taking some major wins here taking some major strides the one thing they're really lacking is a pipe of insight like they're up against a veil of discord phoenix they're taking tons of magical damage but they don't have any form of magical resistance other than a bkb on earthshaker like they could really benefit from a pipe more than a blade mill yeah and now continuing forward, I mean, what's the... Oh god, KVH. Does buy an, another well, half component for his refresher, but he is just... He's just struggling, man. There's no other way to put it. He's just been picked off continually. In the team fights, he is putting out a lot of damage, though. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, there was a game yesterday where Korok uh, was sort of in a similar position. he just gotten killed all game, but then he got a Refresher Orb, and it did not really matter. So get both those ultis oh. off, you do so much damage. And man, look how aggressive the Storm is playing. He's using all of his mana now. They're gonna move oh, on to Smash yet again, and he gets caught in the Static Storm. No BKB for you. That AoE Doom effect basically gonna keep him from using that BKB. That brings him down. Yeah, Guardian yeah, Greaves, on the well. Clockwork. So he's double damage right clicking himself because he couldn't BKB it due to Static Storm. Oh, Jeffins going ham on the Stinger, but not able to bring him down. Glimmer Cape walks away, and now in comes PQ, who's been great this game. Drops down the huge Echo Slam onto a few. Death Ward going to come out. Do they have anything to cancel it? PQ is going to walk forward, and not today. Are going to call GG Bo Real Esports on their way, perhaps. Radiance bottom tower. To Jesus Christ. I, I mean, they were huge underdogs in this game, mm -hmm. to oh, definitely. say the least. And yeah, that was, I, I remember, I forgot the bets, but it was like 60 or 70%. Obviously, 70 something in favor of not today. Uh, Boreal underdogs galore, but they pull it through. They really played an amazing game, especially the Disruptor, uh, uh, to a greater extent as well, the Clockwork. Pizza Dad, 37, and Jepin's really made it happen. Some good plays from the everybody around, including their shaker, but. Especially the disruptor, like those glimpse plays, just made the game for them. Yep, and uh, Bo Real had beaten top five to get here. That was another pretty. Uh, that was another one that, uh, at least by the best, was considered an upset. So Bo Real, on their way to just upsetting through the winners bracket. The winner of this best of three d does have Nar awaiting them. So certainly some pretty good opponents in the upper bracket finals. And there is a lower bracket now in the Canada Cup. So. Wheel and Ehug are the remaining teams down there, but we'll be back in a few minutes. Apologies again for any technical issues during this first game, but we should be all done with those. We should be good to go for game number two. I'm What Is Hip from High Ground TV on Twitter at What Is Hip TV. With me tonight, Blaze at Blaze Casting, and uh, have been enjoying the series thus far. Any any closing words of wisdom? 
Well, I, I think that Boreal should really just stick to their guns. They didn't play like a 6.84 full lineup. Like they're not going for new meta. Everybody get Aghanim Scepter and go nonsensical stuff like that. They played around with some new items a little bit, but for the most part, they just played them. They played their really good strategy that could have worked in either patch. And I think they should kind of play that all around style once again. We'll be back in a couple minutes, guys. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.